The word defibrillator for today, where we're trusting God for a word from within the word. So, uh, there's a few so's and but rather. So, we're going into 1 Corinthians 2, verse 9 will be the one for today. Now, speaking to a friend as to when we should be singing, kind of, come on, you should be praying uh, and you should be singing. And I'm saying, but, you know, Ephesians 2, 9 says that we, or is it Ephesians 2, 6 says that we sit on the same chair that Jesus sits on in the throne room. So because of Jesus Christ, we're already in the throne room. Uh, we shouldn't have to do praise and worship to be able to get into the throne room. We do praise and worship because we in the throne room. It's out of the presence with him and out of the the um, expectation of being in that presence that the promises that come to us in and through Jesus Christ because we've given our life to him causes us to sing. Doesn't that make sense? It does. Now, we do have certain things that make us sing or want to sing. And it should, there should always be a song in our heart. Doesn't matter what we're going through, doesn't matter where we are, there should always be a song in our heart. And for that, we need to always understand that God will be there with us. So when a person is walking around and they just have a song in their heart all the time, I guarantee you it's because there is something happening in their life that has caused them to do that. And so let's see if I can give you something just for today that could possibly cause you to sing. Now, starting off at verse 8, it says, None of the rulers of this age or world perceive and recognize and understood this. For if they had, they would never have crucified the Lord of glory. So, back to verse 7, But rather what we are setting forth is a wisdom of God, once hidden from the human understanding, and now revealed to us by God, that wisdom which God devised and decreed before the ages for our glorification, to lift us into the glory of His presence. How amazing is that? And, and quite right, none of the rulers of this age or world perceived and recognized and understood this. I don't know if they still do. For they had, if they had, they would never have crucified the Lord of glory. True, but it was a necessary process in order for us to be where we are today and have access to that. Now, in verse 9, it does say, But on the contrary, the scripture says, What eye has not seen, and ear has not heard, and has not entered in the hearts of man, all that God has prepared, made, and keeps ready for those who love him, who hold him in affectionate reverence, promptly obeying him and gratefully recognizing the benefits he has bestowed. <laughs> and we were talking, following on from what we were saying yesterday with the Holy Spirit. Yet to us God has unveiled and revealed them by, through his Spirit, for the Holy Spirit searches diligently, exploring and examining everything, even sounding the profound and bottomless things of God, the divine counsels and the things hidden and beyond, man, beyond man's scrutiny. <laughs> ah, for what person perceives, knows and understands what passes through a man's thoughts, except the man's own spirit within him, just so no one discerns just so no one discerns comes to know and comprehend the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God and we said that this the the fruit of the Spirit is peace joy long-suffering it's an incredible checklist to go through but our reason to sing today is no my, no eye has seen and no ear has heard and has not entered into the heart of man all that God has prepared and keeps ready for those who love him. What causes us to a place of joy in our heart that our mouth reciprocates with a song is the fact of his love for us. And all you have to do, and you have to, is willingly love him. And that's to be patient, to be kind, to do it for God and not for yourself. To always look for the good in, in God and 
to hold no records or wrongs. And when you sit down and spend time with him, is to always tell him the truth. That's all. Because we have this preparation that's been made for us. We were talking about the good life that has been set aside for us before we even walked uh, on this planet Earth, before we, before we even were born, before one of them were lived. For those who love him, who hold him in affectionate reverence. Affectionate reverence, well, reverence means that you realize at this exact moment that he's your father and you are his child. That aha moment that induces inside of you a wanting to serve and an unwillingness to offend. Because you love him. You absolutely love him. Promptly obeying, gratefully recognizing the benefits he has bestowed. And I know sometimes I've been there in my own life is I don't think this beneficial. I don't think this is a, a, a good place to be. You know, with Joseph, Joseph was in jail. God was with him, and God was well pleased with him. Are you in that situation where you, you feel all locked up? Maybe you are in a physical jail and going, come on. Father, I don't want you here with me inside. I want you out there getting me out, rescuing me. And on top of it, in that situation, this situation where you are at this moment in time, God is well pleased. Because it's that place that you and I need to be in order for us to go where we need to go. It says here to bring him glory. And it's through the Spirit of God that he will bear witness to us. The things that the world's never known. Understandings that the world's never had. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your word. Thank you, Father, that in this understanding of whose we are and what you've got in store for us and all your promises, it just ignites within us. It gives us the strength, the power to, to carry on and going, you know what, this is worth it. I didn't come this far to come this far, Father. We're going the whole way. And thank you, Father, that is not what lies within us now or anything that we've done. It's everything in the future. That's what you're raising up us to. As you, as you did with Peter, when Jesus, when when you looked at Peter, he was Pentecost. He wasn't just a disciple, or he wasn't just a guy that denied you. He was the guy that the Holy Spirit would manifest through. What do you see in us, Jesus? And help us see it too. We thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen.